We're on the road in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Amy Goodman here in Wisconsin. Juan Gonzalez is in New York. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. President Obama forced Chrysler into federal bankruptcy protection on Thursday so it could form an alliance with Italian carmaker Fiat. Chrysler hopes to sell its core assets, including the Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge brands, into a new company that would be owned by the U.S. government, Fiat, and the company's workers. With Thursday's filing, Chrysler became the first major American automaker to seek bankruptcy protection since Studebaker did so in 1933. The arrangement came after an intensive round of White House-sponsored negotiations among the Treasury Department, the union, and Chrysler's executives and creditors. Speaking from the White House, President Obama said the partnership will save 30,000 jobs at Chrysler, but he criticized the role of some hedge funds as, quote, speculators who pushed the automaker into bankruptcy. I stand with Chrysler's employees and their families and communities. I stand with Chrysler's management, its dealers, and its suppliers. I stand with the millions of Americans who own and want to buy Chrysler cars. I don't stand with those who held out when everybody else is making sacrifices. And that's why I'm supporting Chrysler's plans to use our bankruptcy laws to clear away its remaining obligations so the company can get back on its feet and onto a path of, uh, of success. And no one should be confused about what a bankruptcy process means. This is not a sign of weakness but rather one more step on a clearly charted path to Chrysler's revival. Because of the fact that the UAW and many of the banks, the biggest stakeholders in this whole process, have already aligned, have already agreed, this process will be quick. Chrysler now moves into U.S. bankruptcy court, which must approve the deal. But a group of about 20 Chrysler leaders are... Uh, are uh, Go, set to challenge the bankruptcy filing. They don't agree with the plan to cut Chrysler's $36.9 billion in debt and say that the selling off of Chrysler assets within 60 days infringes on their legal rights. Um, we're going to turn to Ralph Nader later in the broadcast on this issue. But first, we're going to go to break, and then we're going to come back and talk about 100 years of the Progressive magazine with the longtime editor and publisher Matt Rothschild. Stay with us. Perhaps I am a miscreation. No one knows the truth. There is no future here. And you're the DJ, speaks to my insomnia and laughs at all I had to fear. Laughs at all I have to fear. Lewis play the madman poet's final vision. Grungy bands you never know. And why do we drink? I guess we do it cuz And when I turned your station on You sounded more familiar than that party was You were more familiar than that party It's the first time I stayed up all night It's getting light, I hear the birds I'm driving home on empty streets I think I put my shirt on backwards Are you out there? You hear this Jimmy Olsen, Johnny Memphis I was out here Thank you. 
This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. In a minute, we're going to be talking about the Progressive Magazine's 100th anniversary. But right now, Ralph Nader is in line with us, longtime consumer advocate, presidential candidate. Uh, Ralph, can you talk about Chrysler going into federal bankruptcy protection so it can form an alliance with Italian car maker Fiat? What's, that? What's your response? Well, this is an avoidable bankruptcy. Uh, it's not going to produce a lot of uncertainty. Uh, this is a very intricate uh, auto-industrial uh, sequence to produce a car in America, and already uh, Chrysler plants have shut down, uh, we hope just temporarily, because the suppliers weren't getting financed. Uh, so Obama, I think, was not tough enough on the bondholders. Uh, they're the ones who uh, wrecked the, uh, the structured deal. And uh, he now has lost control of the process. It's in the bankruptcy court. Judge Gonzalez is a very strong, experienced judge. He did the Enron case. He's not going to let the Obama administration dictate the terms. So you're going to have delay. You're going to have uncertainty. What the Obama administration, once they put the billions of dollars into Chrysler, should have taken control of the whole situation, period. Instead, he's ideologically in insecure. He keeps telling the public he doesn't want to run an auto industry or auto companies. But he already made the commitment in terms of the taxpayer dollars. And now those dollars are at risk in terms of the final outcome for the workers and the consumers and the overall economy. Uh, Ralph Nader, what about this issue of these uh, smaller bondholders? The big, the big firms like J.P. Morgan Chase and Morgan Stanley all agreed to a deal, but these smaller bondholders, a lot of them equity funds, uh, held out. Uh, what is their argument, and, uh, and is Obama right that they were being basically speculators? Well, he offered them 30, 33 cents on the dollar. They didn't take it. Their argument is that uh, they get first call on uh, Chrysler assets uh, ahead of the United Auto Workers uh, claims. In other words, the, they say they are secured creditors under bankruptcy law, and the United Auto Workers claims are not secure creditors, so they have to be number two in line to the lenders, to these people you just talked about. And, uh, and Obama thinks this is going to be a quick uh, process, but he now is under the control of the bankruptcy judge, who's a very experienced and... Uh, and uh, by the book type uh, judge. So this was a real blunder uh, by the Obama administration. You could see it during his press conference how many times he had to say, uh, we don't want to run an auto company. Well, listen, uh, you put in a little over 5% of the taxpayer money into Chrysler compared to what Obama put into AIG, $180 billion into AIG, a company that's not only deemed to be too big to fail, but it's too secret to fail, given its history around the world. And so the misplaced priorities are really staggering. Huge amount of taxpayer money Obama gives to speculators and reckless uh, uh, financiers in Wall Street who don't produce anything. And he uh, is uh, fooling around with uh, the, the industry that actually produces something and has uh, employment all over the country. So this is a very um, uh, clear indication uh, of Obama, in contrast to his decisive rhetoric, uh, of his indecisive decision-making. And, Ralph, what about the issue now that the United uh, Auto Workers or, or, the, or the workers of, for Chrysler will now be, uh, have, uh, on, at least on paper, have a majority uh, ownership of the, of the new company if it comes out of this uh, bankruptcy, uh, while at the same time having to negotiate uh, their contracts and their wages as well? Well, that's a big if, because we don't know what's going to come out of bankruptcy. But uh, on paper, they're, they're supposed to get 55 percent of the company, the UAW, and uh, Fiat gets uh, far less. The U.S. government gets far less. Uh, I mean, ideally, if, if uh, uh, Obama was a decisive leader in this uh, uh, situation, you would have uh, union, the union, which has the greatest stake in keeping this industry going, obviously, uh, the executives jump ship with their golden parachutes. The union and the government would own uh, and have control of the, uh, own the company, have control of the board of directors, and then they could push uh, for labor goals, for uh, car efficient goals, uh, for innovation goals uh, in a systematic way. But now everything's up in the air. Everything is indecisive. Uh, the suppliers are 
wondering uh, whether they're going to get financed. And with just-in-time inventory, these plants close down in a flick of the eyelid uh, if they can't get the supplies. Uh, so uh, it was a very, very uh, bad decision. Uh, and uh, Obama should have foreseen this. But as a, a society, we don't foresee much. Consumer groups have been pressing for decades for fuel-efficient uh, mandatory standards out of Congress and the uh, White House. And unfortunately, uh, the UAW allied itself with uh, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler year after year, going up to Capitol Hill with John Dingell, their congressman, and saying no to fuel efficiency. And that, uh, more than anything else, was the beginning and the end of the uh, domestic auto industry in comparison with their foreign competition.